Hi everyone, welcome to another unboxing video. This time it's a large packet from the UK containing 15 Beatles LPs. As to exactly which Beatles LPs, I'm not too sure. Which is the beauty of these packages, they're usually a bit of a lottery. Okay, so well packed, that's good to see. Okay, let's have a look what we've got. So, uh, with the Beatles. Uh, these have been left in their covers, but fortunately the seams haven't split. Always a danger with these things. Let's just move that light back a bit. So it's not so much of a reflection. So this is, uh, yeah, with the Beatles, mono. And it has uh, the rear you really got a hold on me. Let's put another light on. That's better. Uh, you really got a hold on me spelling, which means it's a slightly later copy. Let's see what the inner sleeve tells us. Patents applied for. So that was the inner sleeve that EMI used in 1966. Most often seen with inner sleeves of Revolver and collection of Beatles oldies. So I'm expecting this to be what it is. A dash 7N. See it there, and yeah, pretty standard looking copy of Beals for sale in its mono guise. Next up, we've got Please Please Me with a small mono logo, which probably tells us that it's about the same same kind of date but nice and clean on the back so look at the inner again this inner is from well there's sergeant pepper on there so it must be from later than june 1967 so probably late summer 67 into 1968 and this has got the sold in uk label On both sides. This is a sort of reddish paper they used around this sort of time. So I think this is 1968. KT is on the label. And this is a 2N cutting. So not a first cutting. That looks okay. It's got a nice sheen to it. A bit better after a clean, but uh, yeah. A good, solid, excellent copy. Next up is the White Album. This is number uh, 0507426, a quite a late one. Looks to be in good order. Uh, no stereo on the back. So we'll have a look inside and see if the records are mono or stereo, but I'm expecting one this late to be a stereo because I think they changed back to stereo then but he says <laughs> he says that confidently as the mono records come out <laughs> okay uh, so yeah it's mono it's PMC 7067 some sort of stuff going on there I'm not sure what that is uh, anyway a first and only mono pressing that is in quite a late sleeve Still got a dash one matrices on that side and that side. Uh, sorry if the light is really not so good today. Let's see if we've got any inserts. Yep, there's four. The four portraits. And yep, there's the 
as the poster. So that's fully complete. Uh, spine is not bad looking. Yeah, that'll clean off with a bit of window cleaner, I suspect. Next up is a revolver. You can see from the absence of the um, front indicator that it's going to be a stereo copy, which it is. Nice and clean on the back. So the stereo indicator disappeared from this in about 1969. It's, a, it's quite a heavy record. And yep, it's a one box. And this one has a spelling error on uh, track six. It says, I got to get you into my life. And of course it should be just got to get you into my life. So an early one box, which of course used first pressing matrices dash one dash one. Really great sounding record. In a nice cover. Next up is A Hard Day's Night. Again, later issue with a small stereo indicator on the front, but again, nice and clean. Nice clean flip backs and no writing or any other sort of stuff that people used to put on these records back in the day. Again, same period in a sleeve, must be from 68 as well onwards. In fact, this is a 1969 one box. Again, using first pressing matrices and stereo. Great sounding record. A bit dusty, but that's fine. Next up is uh, Let It Be. And that's the uh, first pressing because it's got a red apple on it. So this should have first pressing matrices, which are dash two U to U. Uh, it's going to be difficult to see because they're not uh, very well pronounced. It's a bit scuffed up this copy, but yeah, it's got a few scuffs on that. There's a big one there. Look. But it is two U to U and that's the first pressing, but uh, not in the best condition, fortunately. This one looks a little bit better. This is a rubber sole. A bit of a bit of damage on the flip back there. Ancient damage. I have to do a little repair work on that, but otherwise very clean and bright. Okay, this is a 1970 uh, inner sleeve. So it's going to be a two box or one box. There we go. Your dash three dash three. Great, another great sounding record. Next up is uh, Abbey Road. Nice laminated cover. It's in good order. Bit of room wear from storage, but uh, not too bad. Aligned apple on the back, so probably a little bit of a later pressing. This has got uh, 1971 Polydor inner sleeve with it. Again, dash two, dash two, no Her Majesty on the on the label there. Nineteen sixty two to nineteen sixty six, a really great sounding album, and this is a really early one because uh, it doesn't have the produced by George Martin credit in the gatefold as uh, most of them did. So very early. It's really good condition as well. It's a dash one on that side and dash one on that side. And this album was cut directly from the Stereo Masters. Oh, bit of, a, bit of damage there. But uh, no seam splits actually, which is unusual. And original first pressing uh, inner sleeves with these diagonally cut upper corners. Uh, that's a dash one. And it's a dash three, which I think might have been a first pressing, I'm not too sure. They did change matrices quite often on this record. But uh, yeah, that's a really, really nice copy. A common record, but you know, it was 
played, played to death and quite difficult to find in good condition. Next up is help. Again, no mono or stereo indicator, so it's going to be a, an early 70s pressing, but we've still got the flip backs, so pre-72. And the inner sleeve shows the Let It Be box set, Sentimental Journey and McCartney and Sergeant Pepper and Abbey Road. So it's a 1970-71 inner. This is, uh, this is quite a rare issue actually. Um, the final yellow and black label in mono. It's a pity it's not a one, one box mono, that is the rarest, but this is next to it. The mark there, I think that's just some sort of residue from food or something. But that's quite a rare label. Don't see that very often. Actually, is the is the sleeve mono? Because these uh, oh, it's in the stereo sleeve. That must have been the way it's sold. I don't think this has been uh, messed around with. Um, yeah. So mono record in stereo sleeve. I guess that did happen at that that period with the switchover when mono was going out. Some did get swapped in the shops. They probably stopped producing mono covers. Collection of Beatles Oldies, complete with a nice taped flip back in mono. In a later Apple inner sleeve. Yeah, that's quite a, a well played copy of this album, as most of them were. Yeah, you can see quite a lot of surface wear on there. Not a great sounding record, but uh, it's got a few interesting tracks on there. Yellow Submarine. I'm trying to guess before I turn it over what it is, just by looking at the front, you know, a little bit of a guessing game, because I didn't know what was in these sleeves when I, when I uh, bought them. Uh, I'm guessing this is a lighter white, so this is a later, not a first pressing, uh, probably a stereo, which it is. Um, yeah, because it has the Gavin Lofthouse credit there, which didn't appear on very first pressing. So I'm expecting this to be a first pressing. It's actually not, as I can see. <laughs> it's an early second pressing. Dark labels, but with dash three matrix on. Side one and dash one on side two. So that's a earliest second pressing. Maybe the dash three sounds better than the dash one. I've actually never checked, but uh, I'll do that later. There's a companion to the album we saw earlier on. This is 67 to 70. This has got a good weight to it. I mean, this is a this is an early one as well. Now, this one does have the George Martin credit inside, but I'll be interested to feel the, the weight of these discs because that's heavy. Again, first pressing inner sleeves with the diagonally cut inners. Dusty and a bit hairy, but uh, very clean and doesn't leave any spindle marks. Again, that's dash one, dash three. Very clean, high quality sound from this album. Again, cut directly from the masters. That's dash one as well. And that's dash three. And nice big, big hair. There. And here's Sergeant Pepper. No collection would be complete without. That's a nice shiny cover. It's a stereo, can't really see. It's just normal stereo and a stereo patents pending. Ooh. Got the um, bleed over, what well, the bleed through of the, well not the bleed through, the fold, the front and back covers on the flip backs. I'm not gonna open that too much. There's the cutout. Of course, the red and white inners are gone by this time, and this one is a this one's a one box. So the great sounding record using first pressing matrices dash one dash one. There it is. And last but not least, oh, it's a mono one. I thought it would be a stereo one, given all the other 
records in this collection seem to be in stereo um, but it's a mono one looks like an early one yeah it's like it's going to be an original let's have a look indeed we've got the the use emitex rice paper lined inner sleeve and yep there it is it's an original first pressing that's a dash four it's dash four dash three which is a very common coupling so there we go that's quite a decent decent uh decent haul some of these uh, later sounding pressings are really nicely cut and given a clean. I should look forward to listening to them and putting them onto the website, hopefully a little later on. This is something which has been sent to us by a collector in England uh, to be sold on his behalf. And it's something which we don't have in very often. But um, I thought you might be interested to see from the beginning how it all goes. Look very well packaged. Some nice cardboard. Okay, it seems to be in this sandwich. Anything else in here? Nope, that's all packaging. So here it is. carefully undo the tape there it is there you go, you can tell I didn't rehearse it because it's upside down. There we go. It's Please Please Me. And it's not only any old Please Please Me, it's Please Please Me in stereo. And the eagle eyed for you who see the cover will notice that the Angus McBain credit is in the, in the extreme lower right corner, which can only mean one thing. Yep, it's a black and gold stereo. A first stereo pressing of Please Please Me. So this is why I've got the gloves on. I'm going to show you the label. If we can focus a bit. There we go. So It's a Please Please Me Gold Stereo with the uh, Dick James music credits for tracks on side one. And for tracks on side two. And it's really in beautiful condition. And that's not focusing there very well. Let's try that. Okay. That's focusing better in beautiful condition. Stamper codes on this are very early. It's a, well, it's one A, or one R actually, one R for side two. And one G, of course, the first one for side one. But really, no spindle the air there at all. That's a tiny blemish in the paper, not a scratch actually. On the other side, you can see the true indicator of where on these records is the spindle hole, not a mark or blemish anywhere on those labels. You might be able to just pick out the ZT tax code on there, but these playing surfaces are pristine. I'm going to carefully put it back in its sleeve. 
and have a look quickly at the the cover see how good that really is it's a really fine cover you can see as I get the light reflection a bit of storage rubbing a bit of a bit of shelfware there but really for getting on 60 years old incredible Flipbacks are all intact, which is very, very rare for this album because they were just very thin, thinly glued onto this back panel. And no writing, no stickers, no coffee stains, no anything. Lovely corners. And this, this corner here, the one that usually gets the most wear, is in really great shape. Really is one of the best I've ever seen. 